I came from just dudes at work, and it's like, nobody cares if you're cool. It's like, can you fix that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love a knowledge of the hands, people that know, like, mm. they might be, not be able to articulate a thing, but it's like, woo, it's real lofty, but they have a knowledge in their hands. They know how to work. Ryan Colwell, you have come to see us. Yeah. It's good to be here. I, I was so happy to hear from you, and you reached yeah. out a few few weeks ago. Yeah, and this date was just like waiting for you. Perfect. Because like, we always do Thursdays, and I thought maybe we'll take the day off. It's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, maybe happy I'd birthday. stretch out the weekend. Thank you. Um, but then when you called, I was like, this is how I want to spend my birthday weekend. It works great for me. I got a little window of <laughs> nothing to do, and then I'm getting on a plane. Yeah, Perfect. once in a while, life hands you a win win. Yeah. You know? Um, so you're in Nashville right now, but you don't live here. No. Um, you're here as I think that we touched on uh, off camera a second ago, recording a new record. Yep. Super exciting, man. Yeah. It's exciting. I've it's been spending some time with the, the current one and I really enjoy it. Thank you. They all, one of the things about your records that I like is they definitely have a through line. It's your vibe. It's your voice. And there's even like a similar approach record to record. It's acoustic guitar forward and, mm -hmm. uh, it's real flatlander music in the best yeah. sense. Yeah, some of that's changed. I feel like that middle record of the three that are out there kind of takes that shinier, heads to rock and roll for a little minute. But it, you know, I'm writing all my own stuff and I don't really sing well in the, like, I don't mean that I don't sing well, but I don't sing well. And so you just capture me, it is what it is. You can't really change it. I can't take a different approach necessarily. I just do whatever I'm going to do and that's you what got it to is. to be you. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's one thing I've always admired about you is uh, is sort of like a, I wouldn't even say like a determination to be yourself, although that's definitely in there, but it's like a surrender unto self. It's, you know, like- I I'm just out of are. options, mainly. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, all you like, can do. Yeah. I always think like it would be terrible to be Beyonce and just have like, I can do whatever I want to with my voice. So now what do I do? I have to decide. I don't, you know what I mean? It's yeah, so, I love that subject. I mean, uh, the limits- let me see if I can articulate this. I've, Cause I think I've often thought that like, if you're, if there's such a thing as elegance, you know, like I love that word elegance and that means a lot of different things and you can have like folky elegance or whatever. But to me, what that means is working within your limits and making much of within a, a like some kind of con confine. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like in Beyonce's world, the, it's, um, Elegance is harder to achieve because it's like, well, I can do this. There's virtuosity in there that complicates things. But I imagine you, like comping her vocals is just a nightmare because you're like, well, there's just everything's great. Yeah. Mine's really easy. You you're like, that one's not great. This one will do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got one good take. This is it. These, this comp. Um, no, dude, you're great, man. I, I've, I've loved you. And let's maybe we could talk for a second about how we know each other, which is there was a, uh, a long, dark period when you lived in Nashville yourself with your wife and, and children. It wasn't all dark. I it was know, beautiful. Just beautiful to, time. Sure, but... romanticize it a little bit. Um, but how long are you here for? I think we ended up. Uh, here 11 years we got here uh, last time the cicada brood thing happened which they're saying has never happened before but I distinctly remember the sky being blotted out with cicadas and see so it was dark he, and, yeah, yeah so it was dark yeah yeah though so that was I mean I guess we're on the 13 year brood right now maybe you can hear them folks at home in the background but they are they're busy getting busy they're busy outside. getting busy um well well timed and tell me what brought you here in the first place and then and then as part two of this story, what caused you to leave? Uh, I was in Texas playing music, playing like, uh, played a bunch of like trashy oil field bars. I loved it. Little dives and then started playing like some of the college stuff. And it just didn't, I remember this kid like came up to the stage and he's like, play some Texas country. And I was like, I thought I was. I like, what? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what that means if I'm not doing it. We're in Texas. I, this is country. Uh, like, <laughs> and so, but it got just kind of like, it just felt super debased. All the places, and there's beautiful scenes there, but, but the scene I was in at the time was like, man, I, this doesn't feel like I can make what I want to make or come out the other side being who I want to be. So I just hung it up for a little while. Um, pretty soon after that, first kiddo on the way, and then we were 
we were like, well, I still want to play music. I think a lot of people thought I'd quit, but it, I still want to play music. So it was like, well, of course you go to Austin or whatever. You head down there. Mm. Um, and, then, you know, Fort Worth has a scene now, but at the time it wasn't really, everybody was, it was all down by Austin. And I just knew I didn't want to do that. I didn't, it was so predictable. Like, and I knew a lot of people. Um, they could probably put me inside of that tradition and, you know, the infrastructure, the career stuff. I could probably work. But I didn't, you know, it was just predictable. Yeah. And it, I was bored thinking of myself in that context, especially because I'm- Austin context. Yeah, yeah. Because it would just been like put on me for a long time. Like, oh, but you're going to move to Austin someday. And I'm like, oh, it's, I love Austin, you know. But it was like, I could just imagine what that was already. And I didn't know what this was. Mm. And so I was like, well, you know. Uh, and I listened to a lot of by, drive-by truckers and they have that song that said, um, Nashville's where you go to see if what is said is so. Yeah. So I was like, let's go find out. And so we came and uh, it's been a, it's been a more a little more than a decade here and just like fell into a lot of lovely relationships. And uh, I think because of that, hopefully I got a lot better and stretched me outside of myself a lot. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Nashville shows you what you are and what you aren't. And I think that for those of us, some kids grew up here and that's all they know. God help them. Uh, but a lot of us came up in our in our own little ponds and puddles out in the country. And maybe we had some uh, a modicum of acclaim in those Which ponds. Which is dangerous for you. Yeah. Well, you, can... I, you know, there's two types that get that that acclaim in those smaller places is one of them stays and then soaks up the acclaim. Mm -hmm. And is like the big the big gun in the little town, and then there's another kind that's like I want to go to Nashville to see if it's so. Yeah, and walk on a wire, walk on a wire, and then you get here and you're like, oh wow, I'm not, I ain't much. Yeah, or there's a lot of well, what you, I do. We used to go to that songwriter salon that Amy Spees put on, and that was kind of like the first like experience for me to walk into some of these rooms and stuff. Um, as far as like on the writer side. And you would just be like somebody that was maybe real new in it and real rough. And then the next person would be like, well, this was my number one song. And you're like, what? And like, you know, and there's just people that have the folky independent thing that were like really kind of masters. And then some guy that did a pop thing and then somebody that was not there yet. And it was just like that just pulled on you. And it's like anything. You you hang around with somebody that's great and it rubs off. Like, you, you know, it at least opens your mind to what's possible inside of yourself. Yeah. I mean, shout out, I love that you brought up Amy Spies. Um, shout out to Amy. She, for a, a long time, had a, a, a weekly get together called the Song Salon. And this was where whoever was around in town, it was always on Mondays because that's a good day to get so touring songwriters uh, together. Um, you'd come and you'd have your new song. And the, the only rule, as I remember, was that you had to play a new song, mm -hmm. like one that you hadn't, the, a first time song. Mm -hmm. And so when I was going there really regularly, that was a very fruitful time for me because it was just an obligation to write a new song a week. Yeah. And so and definitely I wrote some songs in that period that are, you know, I played a show two nights ago and included that in the set list. Cool. But um, I wanted to come back to this, this Nashville thing. Um, and maybe I could just like, uh, use myself as an example, but I came from my own small town and maybe I thought I was something. And then I showed up here and I'm like, well, I'm about the, uh, the worst guitar player in this room probably. And maybe I'd give myself a B in or C in singing compared to all these people. And there's a lot of great songwriters here. And so if I want to survive, I, for me, I had to like figure out what is it that I do that none of these cats are doing? Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of a really long journey that I'm, you know, really still on. But I wonder what your experience was in that. Probably really, really similar. Like learning to work in the context of myself and my voice. You know, you hear somebody and just sing. Like I actually, a lot of a lot of people, they maybe don't excel at certain aspects because they're so talented in another aspect. And for me, my journey's kind of been the opposite. I'm like, I don't necessarily shine in any of them, the technical side of stuff. And it's been a real blessing because then I had to dive in on that. Like, well, then what are you, what's, what is the story here? Who's, you know, what are you putting forward if it's not technical? 
you know, prowess, whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, forced me to kind of put me forward because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to do any of the other stuff so well to beat these other cats mm -hmm. at something, you know, and, and shine in that way. You know, that's the thing is that you are, um, you're very much an individual, you're an artist in this sense. And uh, I was having this conversation a couple of days ago with a friend about the kind of um, art I like and artists. It Maybe it's just like, it's not even like like, it's just like I'm drawn to. Mm -hmm. And there's there's this kind of um, songwriter who can, who's really proficient and um, they've got their ear to the the zeitgeist of the now and they're willing to roll with the punches and change and evolve yeah. according to the market's demands and they write songs for that and they get success in that and anybody could sing their songs and there's i mean this is not to take anything away f from th that kind of writer because it's really difficult to write a song that like taps into the identity of a million people amazing but i've always just liked the the ones that had a unique perspective in a this is just who I am and this is how I see the world and I'm going to write this song from my heart and it's not going to, it's like, it's not going to be formulaic or strategic or um, follow a necessary path. I didn't know where I was headed with this song when I started writing it, you know, it had ended someplace different, but there's something about this song that's like, I give my stamp of approval on as me, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like... Um, I try. I think that I'm in that camp a little bit. I write from a naive perspective, but I think that you're absolutely one of those cats. I'm trying and, to die with like a bag full of songs that are just you can look back over them and go, Let's understand. I don't, I don't know if that's right, but understand who I am or get you know, it's like just my own thing. It's yeah, like just my own planting my own garden. Like I don't care what's selling at the store. You got to develop all that on the back end, you know. And there's the other way to do it. And like you said, it's like those guys are great that's maybe harder i think it would be for me to try to slot and to, to be, slot yeah. yeah 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 no i think it's i think i mean it definitely is hard and there's a lot of cats doing it badly and there's only a very small number of cats doing it really well mm -hmm. so Not a lot of room at the top amazing yeah for anything yeah uh one of the things that I think people listening should check out is a uh, post on your on your gram. If you're watching, we'll throw it up on the screen right now. Your handle it's just Ryan Colwell, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was sort of a, a a post written in white heat, and I want to say like maybe in December or something. It yeah. was just like I just rolled into town, and I'm just it was just like you feel a, the white lightning. In I was your up veins. at like 4 a.m. laying in bed, just you know, and I'm like I'm, I probably shouldn't be this honest, but. Uh, but I was, you know, and I just said whatever I said. Yeah, man. And it, it, I mean, it caught fire as much as anything does. Um, and maybe you could talk a little bit about the circumstances that led well, to that and then what sort of the fallout afterwards. The, yeah. The greater context is like, you know, I put a record out in 2015, got more press than I could even comprehend and found myself. NPR the, stuff. Yeah. Rolling Stone stuff. I've, Got to go play in London with Patty Griffin and saw my name next to Kanye's and stuff. I was like, I don't know what's happening at all. And so, you know, and I've had a couple of moments that have kind of risen up like that over, you know, since then. Um, and then you put out a record and like the last record, I'm more proud of the last record than maybe anything I've ever done. Um, but like all that kind of stuff, just whatever. It goes, some of the bumps are bigger than the others, you know, yeah. and you're kind of on your way up and then everything. So I find myself like in this part of my career where I'm between record cycles and everything's just kind of, you know, and that record is like a grower, you know, a lot of my stuff takes a few listens. And so just kind of living in that moment, wishing I had more going on, kind of, but also having a lot going on, like I'm writing the best I've ever written, I think, uh, I mean, even now, I hate to say it, like, oh, it's, there wasn't that much going on, and it's hard, and you drive all over the country, and you, you know, it's, you're trying to make it work, and just, uh, so I drove back from L.A. like 19 hours, and it was, you know, I'm just laying in bed trying to figure out how to make this work, because I know, like, even this last record, if you, it's like, if I can make you listen to it three times, we're good, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just trying to manufacture that is not possible you can't force that something goes it goes and if it doesn't it doesn't um and so just laying in bed knowing like there's more to this but like the more that i posture like yeah i'm doing great which i am doing great i don't want to say i'm doing great 
career is awesome. Opportunities are whatever. But in that moment, it just felt dark. And if you posture and you're like, it's all happening for me, then those opportunities don't come to you. I think we're supposed to look like we're really, like, this guy's got so much going on. And the more I did that, it, you know, it's almost like people are like, well, you're good then. I'm not going to holler at you, you mm. know. And so I was just got naked in front of everybody. So yeah. here it is, you know. I think I'm doing what I do well. I got great records. And it feels like it's coming to an end, Yeah, you know. And I'm not putting up with it. Like, I, because it, out of necessity, like, what else am I going to do? Like, I got too good at this to not make it work. And... On the other side of that coin, I don't know how to do anything. Yeah. Anything, you know. I'm fairly handy. What I've figured relate. things out, but it's like the the curve to make something else go. It's like so much energy. That ship sailed, man. Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> and so just, you know, live in, I don't know. Yeah, you I can't even remember all the ins and outs of that text, but I remember well, that he, feeling, that darkness, when you're just like, I, you know. It was raw-boned. Yeah, and I think the whole thing was basically I'm not quitting. Like, and I feel like I'm very much in a season where I'm supposed to quit. Like, it's like music wants to kick me out, opportunities want to kick me out. Like, it's just too tight. I got four kids, live at the end of the earth. You know, everything is harder constantly. And like, yeah, every time you think you're like we're good, it's like that show's canceled. The car needs a thousand dollars put into it. Just everything, everything, everything. I'm not cool. You know what I mean? You're pretty cool. Well, thanks. But you know what I mean? I'm not like part of some cool club. Uh, and at the same time, I think it said in that post, like I have songwriters come up to me everywhere I go. Like, dude, you. And I'm like, well, tell your friends then. You know what I mean? So yeah. just trying to figure that that out. You should read the post because I can't clarify. Like, yeah, if we'll, you're watching uh, we'll this, the, what I'm saying, I'm like. Yeah, well, I just wanted to get you to dig into it a little bit. And you have, and thank you. And uh, now I want to talk about, and I've always wondered about this. Because it's one thing to be, because you've had kids as long as I've known you. You moved up here with kids, mm -hmm. and you only kept making yeah. more of them. And uh, it was like it's one thing to be some know nothing idiot by your lonesome making your way in the world, but it's another thing to have uh, to be a know nothing idiot with a family. And um, or I just I'm curious about your partner in life and how she's been uh, so open to this idea and being so supportive and as much as you want to talk about it and if it's too personal then that's fine too we no. can edit anything out my wife will we will have been married 20 years um this coming november and like Damn. she just doesn't bat an eye at any of it you know what i mean even recently like during that time of that post it's like hey maybe maybe this isn't happening you know and she just doesn't bat an eye you know she's just straightforward she almost laughed at me really she's like whatever mm. you're not quitting like you know what i mean mm. um and with her and with the world like the more transparent i am uh the more good things that happen you know what i mean um and there's it's like we could talk for 20 hours about her we'll she talk just, for a little bit she's not like the creative type in the in the sense that we think about you know she she homeschools our kiddos. She builds our world, you know. She makes our our life taste the way it does, you know. You walk in her home and that's, you feel her presence. Mm. And so she's just kind of always been anchored. Like she's never like, you want to move to Nashville? Let's move to Nashville. You want to keep having babies? We'll keep having babies. You want to leverage everything we have in life to make another record and another record and another record? Okay. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there's no answer to those questions. You just will this work? And you just take off. I think we'll go that way. Okay. And she just goes. I mean, that's amazing, man. I, I feel like there's a lot of um, partnerships that start out pr pretty permissive uh, in that sense of like, yeah. a girl's like, oh, I've married a rock star or a rock star yeah, in yeah, making. Yeah. I don't think she and thinks that. And then a couple of kids in, she's like, maybe you should get a straight job and grow up yeah. for once. I'm sick of this. She's the other way. You know, uh, she does not think I'm a rock star. Uh, and she's not, the shine has wore off in like the first two weeks, you know. <laughs> and so she knows what she's in for. And she just, like, keep going, keep going, keep going, you know. And, you know, I wake her up at like 3 a.m. playing songs. Sometimes I'll walk in there and be like, hey, you got to wake up and listen to this. She's like, what? It's <laughs> two in the morning, you know, go to bed. She's in for it. Um, 
I have a lot of people that I witness that they say things like, oh, my wife would never let me fill in the blank, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I guess I never asked and she never offered. Like, it's just <laughs> like, go. Yeah. Got to be gone for two weeks. Go for two weeks. You can stay up all night, stay up all night. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? She will warn me when I'm like too far adrift from myself. Like, mm -hmm. hey, come back up, come back to home, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the like metaphorical sense. Yeah. So she's good for those kind of things. She's really encouraging. She's kind of like a natural encourager in a very quiet way. That's and really so, extraordinary to have that. It's crazy because it because it, you know, and and if you're in the other kind of relationship, I wouldn't want to discourage somebody. Like a lot of things have merit, but she just she had, she hasn't had that. It's just been so consistent for 20 years. It hadn't been like there was a season that she doubted and pulled away or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she I'm sure she's had doubts, but she has not uh, pulled back the reins at all. She's just like, go, you know, this will be okay. And she's very independent. Like when I leave, her, she's got friends who are like, what do you do when Ryan's gone for weeks? She's I'm like, I don't know, just live. Mm. She's doing her own thing anyway. So, uh, One of the songs that jumped out at me on the new record I feel like maybe there's a little of this conversation in that song, but that song, Let's Go Crazy, yeah. feels like that mm -hmm. sentiment. Yeah. Um, maybe we could play that one. That would be great. You feel like it? Yes. All right. Uh, do you want to set, set it up a little bit more or anything that uh, this came out of? <laughs> it's hard for me to like frame this song correctly because I, I'll make a caricature out of it. But when we were in Nashville, I just wanted to go home mm. really badly. And it things weren't always like we had this crazy meth head neighbor and there's gunshots and this and that and you know and I'm like we moved home with four kids back to the street I grew up on we live like a block away from my parents I'm like that's I want to go home 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 you know and it's like my mom will keep the kids and I'll argue with my dad and I'll go fishing with my brother you know uh, as opposed to whatever was going on here after a decade you know yeah it's hard for me not to like shit on nashville and be like oh, nashville but um in the context of this song because it can sound like that's what i'm doing i had a beautiful time here but something stirred up inside me even stronger than when i left texas and it's like i gotta go and it's like something stirred and it's like i gotta go back i gotta go home well let's you know? give it a ride right Don't make the mistake Thinking this ain't war Like everyone's the same Same thing they're fighting for I got three little babies in a two-bed ranch Try to do right when I think I can I ain't gonna let them down no, baby, let's go crazy, leave this town for all our babies Raise them like my mama raised me Heard you in the kitchen praying It ain't leaving, gonna save us This ain't who we are If it ain't tough, baby, it ain't ours Let's load our shit up in our car Oh, baby, let's go crazy And I I can't take this anymore like all I do is stand Stare at that front door Other the girls out on the porch Laughing at what they don't know There's a black car coming by 3 a.m. The neighbors go out and go in again I ain't gonna wait around And no Baby, let's go crazy, leave this town for all our babies Raise them like my mama raised me Heard you in the kitchen praying It ain't leaving, gonna save us This ain't who we are If it ain't tough, baby, it ain't ours Let's load our shit up in our car Oh, baby, let's go crazy Hello, baby, let's go crazy 
You're everything I want You're everything I need You're everything I love Life is like a dream Yeah You're everything I want you're everything I need You're everything I love Life is like a dream, yeah You're everything I oh baby Let's go crazy, leave this town for all our babies Raise them like my mama raised me Hurt you in the kitchen, friend It ain't leaving, gonna save us this ain't who we are If it ain't tough, baby, it ain't ours Let's load our shit up in our car and, Oh, baby, let's go crazy And oh, baby, let's go crazy And oh, baby, let's go crazy And oh, baby, let's go crazy I watch, like, UFC highlights where those guys, I always find the one where the guy's like getting murdered and you're like, he's out. There's no yeah, way he's coming there's back. There's no way. And then he gets up and then like he fights oh his way God. back and just catches the guy. Chills. And I have chills like, and like tears in my eyes. Yeah. Like nothing makes me cry like but those yeah. moments yeah. in fights. Yeah. Just like the heart. There's this dude, Nate Diaz, who's supposed to get whipped by Conor McGregor and he just puts it on him. You're like, oh. you're supposed to die in there. They, they put you in there because he was going to break your face in and nate's like whatever man like cool you know i love those moments yeah well uh there was something you said oh yeah about wanting to go home and um i can so relate to this and i didn't do what you did and i still wonder a part of it's because my folks moved away from my hometown like i you know i grew up in a small town in idaho and then i went to college in um on the west coast in this little town bellingham uh and I mean, I, it's really weird. This is, I'm going to be really candid here for a second, but I spent my whole twenties in this little college town and I, it was, it was really great to me. And I had this band, the barbed wire cutters shout out, um, which, uh, changed my life. You know, we just like, that's what started me in music. We made these records, we had this following and it was like the first indication from the universe. That's like, you can do this. You know, it is a possible way forward, but in my mind, I never, identified with that part of the world i was always like from the sagebrush and the dry country and the potato patch and i felt not cool and i felt far from where cool happened and i still feel that in my mind you know and um so when i moved to nashville it was actually like in some ways a closer fit to that because maybe it's the, the southern thing and the inland Idaho country thing or there's some overlap there and personalities. Uh, there's that piece of it, but there's also like, I, I always wanted to do my own thing. And I felt like in that town in Bellingham, I was just kind of known and it was a small town. And there was this sort of like that pressure to like conform that happened. And I didn't like that. I didn't like, um, apologizing for myself or like being a weirdo and trying yeah. stuff and failing and yeah. and like people are like who the, who the hell do you think you are that kind of exists where i'm at you know there's no there's that's no, got to exist there's no affirm affirmation for the <laughs> arts in perryton texas like it's like yeah. you're in the oil field or you're in ag or you're something around that just making the town work it's like dudes go to work they look at me like oh. some people think it's really cool but a lot of people they just don't get it you know and sure. It's, like, it's not like you're like hanging out with other riders. And, yeah, and, but you know, it's like you kind of went to the to the big town and got confirmed in your ways, in a sense. You know what I mean? Like you don't you're not about to like let those people's opinions no. change. And um, I guess w what I I wanted to say was, um, you know, living here for a long time, I had that moment. My little sister passed away in 2019, mm -hmm. and my, my all my people live back west. I've been chasing this dream forever, and that was really the moment where I'm like. Maybe it's done, you know, like maybe like I'm, I've had this great run. It's been no complaints and I don't identify. I still identify with where I'm from in my mind. And I would like to go back and be closer to my, my folks are getting older and, 
And I'm thinking now I'm thinking out loud a little bit. I'm like, why the hell haven't you, Linker? And the answer is because they don't live in Idaho. They live in Gig Harbor, Washington, where my brother pastors a church and they're they're there. And it's like, I'm not gonna move to Gig Harbor, Washington to be, yeah. you know, like I don't know that place. That's back yeah. kind of where I moved away from. Um but I do feel I'm definitely trying to get my girl to move to Idaho. That's that's in the that's in the works. I don't know what the timeline is there. Randa's hearing this in the car right now. She's like, uh oh. oh. <laughs> well, you know, when I start, talked about moving home, my wife at first was like, We said we would never go back. And if we ever do go back to the panhandle of Texas, we're not going to my hometown, Perryton. She's like, There's nothing, you know, and now she loves it. Um, but there's the other side of it too. Remember, uh, I had a song called "Won't Come Home," mm-hmm. and it basically, if you leave, you won't come home because you'll be someone else. Also, home's going to change, and so I'm at home, but I, but it's so different. My community's changed. A lot of people are gone, but I'm not the same either. So it's not. There's some aspect of that. There's people who well, you can return and, and recollect things or whatever, but I don't see it that way. Like even if I go, I went home. I did what you're talking about. And it's yeah. like, man. There is a homecoming, but it's not its not whatever you imagined it to be anyway. Yeah. And we live in these fragmented communities where everybody ships out somewhere, you know, mm, which is a work long, or longer conversation about the way communities are built. But Well, I've heard tell, too, that those, like, the panhandle community was, like, been especially hit hard by the change in agriculture oh, yeah, and sure. how now the farms are huge and they're mm-hmm. operated mm-hmm. by remote control in a sense. You know, there's not, yeah. like, so a lot of these towns kind of shriveled up and disappeared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, everything consolidates and, yeah. and machinery takes the jobs and Wendell Berry and all that. Um uh, if you're, are you familiar with Wendell Berry? No. Uh, he's a farmer. Oh, Wendell Berry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, if anybody's wondering what we're talking about. What's that What's that book he wrote? Um, um, the, he's written the Unsettling several, but, of America. That's one. There was another one. Jaber that, Crow. Uh, that's another one. The one that, I'm, that I read was kind of like a, a, a memoir of sorts of like his time on his own tiny farm. He um, had that documentary, Look and See. Yeah. And it's just... Anyway, uh, there's a movement I feel like, mm-hmm. especially the pandemic, kind of I think changed a lot of people's um, desires for a habit of life, and and I think that it's turning into a trend of outward movement from the cities and even the suburbs as like technology makes it so you can work from home mm-hmm. and you can have maybe a job and also like have a real garden. Mm-hmm. and get off the grid and get organic. And I can feel myself move in that direction. Yeah. You know, like I remember uh, I drank tap water my whole life and Randa started going like, man, we should get some filtered water. I'm like, I'm a hard body, baby. You got a Berkey? Like, mm-hmm. We got a Berkey. And man, I don't, I don't, I'm never looking back. I'm never it's going part, back. It's part of like the routine at night. I love getting my little gallon jug right before I go to bed, mm-hmm. check the Berkey up, oh, needs to be topped off, fill it up with tap water, let it do its thing overnight, wake up. Have that, that water sh- come shooting out of the bottom under pressure. Best yeah. cup of coffee ever. Anyway, but stuff like that and like eating cleaner and you yeah. know, people want that. People mm-hmm. are like, I, I mean, the poison in the food now alone is just like, yeah. I read something somewhere. It's just like the, the toxins and the antibodies and it's, you know, it's a, a, another uh, fraction higher <laughs> than when we grew up as kids. I'll put myself in your uh, generation. But like it's just it's no, it's no way to 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 live. Yeah, and I think there's a trend moving away from participating in that. So we'll see. That was kind of yeah. A t- we want to be tangent, feral and wild. And yeah, man, get out there. Oh. There's a there's a I can't remember the 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 Instagram account, but it's one of my favorite ones. It's called a uh, Aurelius. It's not Marcus Aurelius, but it has some kind of vibe like that. And basically, it's some guy. I don't. It's, he never's in it. He just posts these things about you know he lives off the grid with his family and his wife homeschools the kids and he's raising pigs and chickens and and they so so if I farming. ever did do something else uh, and I and I aim to uh, have other seasons in my life, other chapters. Uh, I would love to farm, and I don't mean like combines and stuff i mean be a grass farmer raise sheep yeah you know yeah man get some get some chickens get some pigs i would love to take a piece of land that's trash and restore it just rotating animals and stuff so cool but 
And then I just sound like a like a meme, like a trad wife meme or something. Where I'm like, yeah, of man. course you want to become a farmer. <clears throat> yeah, That's but it's real. Saying. The desire to connect to the land is real. It's it's ancient. Yeah. It's my buddy just started a chicken farm, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll call it a chicken farm. J C Acre, well. just outside of Amarillo, and they sell eggs. It's just, I think he's going to end up with like. 1500 chickens by the time it's all done amazing it's like that's and they're selling memberships and they deliver it and it's like it's just there's a hunger for it there's a market for it Mm -hmm. we were just down at the farmer's market here at the end of the street and um i learned something today because there was a guy selling like if you go to the turnip truck you can get the organic you know carton a dozen organic eggs cost about 25 dollars. that's an exaggeration but um you still have to refrigerate them. But same guy, guy who owns that farm is selling them off the back of his truck at the farmer's market, uh, not refrigerated. Mm-hmm. And he was like, when we bought them, he was like, you know, you can just leave these on the counter. Yeah. I was just like, what? If you don't wash them, they last for long. Yeah, I had no idea. See, this is some city people don't know this kind yeah. of stuff. They think eggs just need to be the refrigerated. Bloom. They still have the bloom they, on them. Yeah, is... and those best eggs. I mean, like, where I'm waiting to go next Saturday. Well, and then eggs. you're supporting some guy that's connected to the land whose neighbors need him, he needs his neighbors, and you get this interconnected thing happening. And there's no question, there's not this like fragmented, super abstract way of like, how do I exist and make a living in this world? Like he works that piece of land with those animals and knows you and versus like cubicle living. It's like, I can't, I think if I was, I, I would just die if I had to wonder about how I'm actually connected to an outcome. You know, I think that's like half of what's wrong with the world is people are like, I do this and can no way see how it's connected to Yeah, this. I do this I like one up. little, and just little, rep- send it rep- into the ether. Part. Yeah. yeah, TPS reports and we're done. I just wrote this thing a couple of days ago about QR codes because I got so irritated. I tried to go to the show and it was just such a disheartening experience for moment one. Like, um, first of all, I had to, you know, the apps. I'm not going to go into the, all the detail. I wrote all about it. That was <clears throat> triggering enough for me. Um, but the just the dehumanization of all of the little moments of transaction in modern life, I think we're like reaching a crisis point and people feel it in their yeah. bodies and in their hearts and it's not fun. And this like this sort of like push for endless scalability, like this thing that's happening in the phones with social media and you're making a post and then you're trying to make it go viral or whatever. And all these people, like a like is just a, it's a a pixel on a screen from some unknown person you'll never meet. And it means something to you. And you're allowing that to have that kind of power over you. Mm -hmm. It's like, that feels very poisonous to like an authentic approach to life. And Things like organic farming, things like being local, things like house shows, things like um, just getting together with friends in your neighborhood. Yeah, I breaking remember, bread's important, dude. It's a big deal. I mean, when the when the George Floyd uh, murder happened, and we were all, like, it was just a national uh, tragedy and crisis, and everybody felt like we got to do something. I was like, I, I felt that too. And my version of that was to go down my street and ha- with a little invitation that my friend Laura Baisden made. Um, and we had an ice cream, I made homemade ice cream and we had an ice cream social. I just, we have a weird street, all different kinds of people live here in East Nashville on this, even this block of mine. And it was just this block and all these people I never even met, even though I've lived next to him for the whole seven years came and we all mm. saw each other for the first time. And dude, it was, I'm still writing that. I feel like this podcast is in like you can trace the origin of this podcast back to that day really? of, yeah, the positive experience of having this like authentic interaction with a person unscripted in a room or in a yard or in a space shared together. It's just, it like undoes so much of the toxins of life and the anxieties and the insecurities. And it's like, when you're with people, you're like, you're cool. It's, yeah, I'm cool. It's nice. To it's be okay. People. Yeah. And all the things you like invented in your head about like, well, that son of a all know, that like, stuff, oh, uh, and then you remember like, ah, I love him. He's all, like, right. He's all right. Yeah, he's he all right. That way. Yeah, it was yeah. a, just a stupid post. Yeah, if I don't see people forever. I'm like, I mean, you know how they are. Yeah, and I see them, and I'm like, oh, they're great. yeah, they're great. And it's a, yeah. that that thing of just like getting together in a room. There's no substitute for There's it. A, you can't scale that. We like live in that. Have you watched Office Space again ever? Um, like I, watching it now is like it's so dark. It's like, oh whoa. yeah, that's. Let's go beat up the printers. Uh, Wendell Berry basically <laughs> says, like, you can't fix the world. We have this desire to, like, to, to put it all together. And you can't do it. So it's, uh, mm-hmm. All you can do is take two things that were broken apart, put them back together. Mm. Just two things. 
and your job isn't to fix the world or something. It's just to take those two things. And sometimes those two things are like, put your neighborhood back together, one ice cream at a time. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. That's it's doable. doable. It's yeah. doable. Yeah. yeah. You can like go to sleep that night and go like, well, I did yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a, a famous book, uh, this guy Vol- Voltaire, this classic literature, but a, a, a famous piece, uh, uh, this famous book he wrote was called Candide. And the point of the book is he goes, it's, it's sort of a parody about all these people who think they know what's right. And he's making fun of everybody, religion, p- politics, economists, blowhards, whatever. And he's just like undoes each of these like inflated myths about the what we should do and as you're reading it you're like well what's your answer buddy you know like what's your take and at the end the point of the book spoiler alert is that his advice is the best way that you could ever spend your life is to go and cultivate a garden like a little space yeah. and make that little space beautiful you can't and that's pretty you wise you can't be cynical about a garden you cannot you just, <laughs> no, there's you gotta, nothing you have to hope and you have to work it and you work it in belief that you're, there's going to be, you're going to partake in it. And it's pulling from you and you're pulling it from it. And you're paying a lot of attention to it too. Yeah. You know, that's, I oh, love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is great. This t- conversation has taken a turn. Um, but maybe we could turn it back for a second. And for fun, since we're talking about music and we are in Nashville and you did live here and you are sort of um, uh, not from here and no longer here but i'd love to know and just as candid as you'd like to be like what did you like about it here and what did you not like about it here oh because i can relate on both points i mean I, sure. i'll go with you either direction um i mean it felt cool to just be some dumb kid from nowhere you know show up just feel a city cities mm-hmm. feel cool you know yeah momentarily um I love the South. Like, I love the humidity. I love those dang cicadas, like, whirring, you know. I love the fishing over at Percy, you know. Um, I love being around people who were doing what I was doing, who just said, I'll, let's go see. Let's walk yeah. on a wire. And yeah. when you, when I dropped out of school uh, to pursue music, this old man was in the student lobby and he was like, well, what's your major? And I was like, I actually just dropped all my classes. He said, well, what's the plan? I was like, I'm going to write songs. And he goes, well, what are you really going to do? And that's like the culture I came from. Yeah. Not that everybody's that way. It's a broad brush. but um, And then you come over here and it's like, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's see what's possible. And you want to be like, be very dismissive. Some like like I grew up in a place that might be very dismissive. Like, oh, that guy writes songs. How good could he be? And you come here, and it's like that guy writes songs. He might be the best in the world, you know. And that's really yeah. inspiring. Vince Gill was behind me one time at the store, and Cheryl Crow got groceries in front of me. And I'm just like, it's cool to see people that have that have gone. And I've talked so many friends have this trajectory where it's like, you know, you know their talents there, but their career is just kind of doing this. Yeah, and then they just go, and you go, oh, that's possible. Yeah, that's not some story in a book. That's my buddy. Yeah, you know, and just once you see that, kind of feels very exciting to be in close proximity yeah, to you're greatness. Like, you know, I might catch one too. Let's go. And, yeah, and yeah, that was really exciting. Um, on the other hand, it's like there's a lot of posers. There's a lot of posturing. There's a lot of fashion. <laughs> and I'm, I, you know, and I don't mean what, fashion. What? No, no, not sure, fashion but. in the clothes sense, but like your politics or fashion, the way you talk, the way you, whatever you posture yourself is yeah. all just to be viewed and not what you. What actually, you think is the way forward? Yeah, like, for what your is, own what will they like? Success, yeah. You know, and, and there's so much yeah, posturing. There's so much posturing, and I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't sure. Absolutely, but that is the overwhelming thing: is everybody going? Do I? Am I cool too? Yeah, am I cool too. And it's like, I came from just dudes at work. And it's like, nobody cares if you're cool. It's like, can you fix that? (laughs) You know? And that love, I love a knowledge of the hands. People that know, like, Mm. they might not be be able to articulate a thing. But it's like, woo, it's real lofty. But they have a knowledge in their hands. They know how to work. They know how to fix stuff. They know know how to, yeah. yeah, Get it done. Yeah, I totally agree. I often, my daytime fantasy or my, you know, like when things are really going sideways is... uh, to apprentice to a plumber just because like that is necessary yeah and and like hard we're always gonna need plumbers too like 
you're always going to need them. Yeah. You're always going to need plumbing. Plumbing's ancient, man. Yeah. Um, what a noble profession. And just like any of the trades, like yeah. I've talked to Rand and, you know, we're both like, I don't know, book people and stuff. But I don't know if I'm going to, well, I shouldn't say some of this stuff out loud. Probably I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't know. I'm in a mood right now. We'll just say that. <laughs> To like, I don't think I'm going to encourage my kids to go to college necessarily. Like, I'm not. These days, it's just no. like you can get everything you need to know from mm. YouTube. If you got and a, books, a trade, and, and a creative yeah. endeavor, man, you're probably set for life. Yeah, I think so. I noticed too that like uh, I spend a lot of my time in front of screens and in writing and in my head, and you know, that's my job somehow. <laughs> uh, but so the relief is always like mowing my lawn, fixing a thing. We, you know, we. This is room is pretty bespoke uh the studio and like i made this this little wooden thing to put all our mic stands in and like that was such a joy and i like yeah. thought that through in my mind and you don't have that disconnect you go i did that i, I, I made that roof houses yeah and then i'd drive around and be like yeah put that one on like years later yeah put that one on. i got sunburned pretty bad that, you know <laughs> yeah. but i can draw a straight line to like the yeah, effort man. that I put forward and there's a roof on the house and everybody got paid and it's still there. A lot of honor in Versus that. Versus like some ideas that I've tangled with for years and I'm like, what, what do I have to show for that? Well, I think something, but I can't, the line's not so straight. It's a complicated relationship to have to your own art when you have that kind of um, sentiment, you know, when mm -hmm. you're like, you see the value of um, an honest day's work and yet you're still drawn to making songs for hmm, yeah, to, I probably should what have been end. A, a different guy, you know, but I've just always been well, thinking. My brother is like a very intelligent guy, but he's, uh, he mainly likes to shut his mouth and work. He could fix anything. And he's always telling me, he's like, man, why, why are you always asking about feelings? Like, what are you talking about? Nobody cares, <laughs> you know? And he's, he's smarter than I am, but he's just like, <laughs> what? Like, feelings. Dude, input and output, just get it done, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's, I, I, I probably should have been a different kind of guy, but my, my mind just kept running, you know? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're the kind of guy you are. Let's, maybe you could play another song. Okay. What's that one you're going to uh, do? Colorado Blues. Oh, man. Yeah. I like that one. I wrote that in the kitchen over at Donaldson. Uh, not long before we took off out of here and then went and recorded it with Nielsen Hubbard. Yeah. No, Nielsen. Oh, he's great. Yep. Yep. Let's fire it up. Okay. Lady at night, I lay in bed and run the road inside my head, trying to return where I'm from. Lying on my crooked back, I look back on my crooked path Winding my way back now just seems dumb I get blue like Colorado I hang down like those rocky mountain skies In the valley of where do I go? Dreaming on the mountains I should climb Sitting still just would please me So I made my way out easy I was young when I stole the Raton Pass Went up north and drifted west Till some hill folk called me Tex I just prayed, Lord, straighten out my path I get blue like Colorado I hang down like those Rocky Mountain skies In the valley of where do I go Dreaming on the mountains I should climb Lift your eyes up to the hills Pray the Lord your soul to keep So afraid he never will Boy, stray just out of reach Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, come and find me I get blue like Colorado 
I hang down like those rock mountain skies In the valley, oh why do I go Dreaming on the mountains I should climb Dreaming on the mountains I should climb Uh, so you're back in uh, you're back in town. You're making a new record. You're kind of chipping away at it. It sounds like chipping away at it. We did four days. Uh, me and Ethan Ballinger and Megan McCormick went in with Brandon Bell and did four days. Uh, and then I am returning. You know, I, I just returned and we put in a couple more days. And I'll have to come back one more time and do it again. And just, but it's kind of nice to get a little breathing room because most of the time I record like on all of. One fell swoop. Yeah. Um, well, that's not true. Sometimes I do. Um, but it's nice to, to get these a month or six weeks in between, and they won't send me the roughs, and I don't want to hear the roughs. Huh. Like, let it sit over there and let me wonder, if is it good when you go back in? Because I'm like, I think it was good, but it's, I've been gone for six weeks and walk back in and be like washed in it. Man, that's really exciting. exciting. That's like a reveal. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And you're like, whoa, it's There's not what I thought it was. It's it's this other thing. Sense your imagination starts yeah. doubting or getting too excited about this when it's like, well, that's not actually what it is. It's, it sounds like this. I think there's a great um, uh, benefit in letting somebody else run the dials when you're making a record. And I say this as somebody who is, I feel like I've learned this lesson over and over again because I, I got into Pro Tools years ago. And then when Logic, I was using Logic while you were at lunch. I'm working on this project right now. And I enjoy doing that actually. And um, I enjoy a lot of things about it. But I notice having done it many times over, it's just like when you are got your hands so deep in the stuff, it, it, it really quickly becomes just very you isolatedly you and even yeah. if you're just like even if you're recording by yourself but you have another guy in the room who's hitting record there's there's now still a conversation of of a kind happening yeah. there you're that presence is there in the room and it's the two of you the sense of us rather than me mm -hmm. man i'm saying this this is good for me to say out loud because i feel like i'm my approach to recording music is evolving and this is an important thing that i need to remember next time it comes time to record a song and i'm like well i could just do it myself i know how to do it or i could just hire a buddy and like let's do this and like you i'll actually say that i recorded i was telling you earlier that um i made a song with anthony DeCosta. Mm -hmm. wrote this song by my lonesome the way i often like to do it i like collaborating collaborating scary we could talk about that too um but um, but important um, but I wrote the song by myself and then I recorded it and, um, I'm just like, I need somebody else to kind of help me make this thing do something weirder than me. Cause it'll always be just like me if I just do it. And I've had, um, I've been a fan of Anthony's for years, um, both his songwriting and he just kind of got crazy with the production over the pandemic. And I heard some of the stuff he did with Robbie Hecht and I really enjoyed it. And so I was like, can you? And he's Yes. And so he's got a studio over a couple blocks away. And I, I went in and I had like, as I do, I'd like got the click and I recorded the song to the click so he could just build the track to the click and <clears throat> played it for me. He's like, man, it's kind of fast. Do you think it's fast? And I'm like, I don't know. Like that's, I'm already so glad that you just said that because right. I don't know. So then everything changed. Yeah. And then he All was just like, well, can you just sit here? Can you just, do you have time? Could we just record it right now? I'm just like, Yeah. And so he, I'm like, we're, we find a, a tempo. He's already setting the mics up. And I was just like, oh my God, I couldn't stop talking about it when I got home because I just felt like an artist. And it was just so nice yeah. to just be an artist. And he sat on the floor because his chair is squeaky in the same room while I recorded. And we recorded five passes. And then I left and I was just like, send me the mix, whatever you do. And That's cool. three weeks later, he sent That's me this. Cool. I'm just like, it was so fun yeah. to like, I was afraid to play it because I'm like, what, well, what's it going to be? And what if I don't like it? And that feeling was really exciting. Yeah. But anyway, this is, so did you guys record, um, did you track like at the same time or was there a good bit of overdubbing or? Uh, both. We, we had, um, I forget these guys' names. I looked them up. So that just might come up. Will Honaker and Dan Burns. Oh, Honaker played on my th song. Ridiculous. Yeah. 
ridiculous. Yeah. So we had them in and we went down live with a lot of stuff. Um, because Ethan plays bass a lot too. Honaker's bass player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Ethan played guitar mostly, and Megan played guitar, and you know those guys were playing rhythm section and stuff, or jump on the Juno or whatever, mm. and just see what it is. And then we've been going back and pulling things out, put things in, and just seeing them massaging everything. And uh, when I came and recorded, there was a lot of uh, that pollen was nuts, mm. like a month ago, six weeks ago, whatever. And so there's some overdubs, but some of it's great that way. And so keeping just trying all the stuff so yeah a lot of overdubs but a lot of with the foundation is yeah, sounds foundation. like it was a band in yeah, the room yeah and it was exciting because it's the same thing like i think this song is this and you know ethan and megan are thinking in ways yeah. that my mind was like whoa yeah you know? i really love to let somebody frame me back to myself so i've worked with nilson so long um that i love that too like he'll his way of framing me was like the first time I worked with him, we just talked about Mike Tyson for an hour and he's like, you good to go. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Play the song and then continue the conversation and then play the song again. And I'm like, so when are we going to do this? It's like, we did it. Like it's done. And just finding me in a moment where I didn't have that kind of self-awareness that I was overthinking something. And then you go like, Ethan might just position you, have a conversation with you about something. People will put you in a mood, you know, in a good mood or a bad mood or get you lighter on your feet or make you angry and like let you ride. And yeah. That, that's fun too. I mean, the presence of a person colors the yes. process, colors the art mm-hmm. and bat, for bad or good. So. And Brandon Bell's pushing all the buttons and he just really influences everything. Like the amount of slap back you get back on your vocal, it's going to, it's just going to make you, you hear yourself. You're like, Oh, I'm yeah. this guy now. And they yeah. pull it off and you're like, I'm this guy. You yeah. Know, and, you know, the different tones and textures and, they got buttons galore. Yeah. Kind of blows my mind. Yeah, they got a lot of buttons there in, in Nashville. Um, well, dude, I'm so glad that you came by and talked with us a little bit. Yeah. And Thanks I'm, for having me. I'm really excited to see you. And I'm a big fan. Thank you. And I'm really looking forward to the next record. You're so encouraging. Well, it's good to see you. Likewise. Hey, thanks for watching. Go ahead and click here to like and subscribe. You can click right there to watch another video or click here to watch a playlist featuring the songs of the Morse Code Podcast. Okay, thank you very much.